Stay tuned. I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> Just remember that. Not doing that. Stay tuned anymore. But whatever. Before we get started with this video, if you've had a hard time losing weight, please let me know by putting it in the comment section down below. And if you're ready to figure out how to lose more weight and recomposition your body, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Hey, what's going on? Shane at Shane Hubbard Fit. Today's video is gonna be all about what you should do if your calories are already really low and you're not losing weight. All right, so let's go ahead and paint a quick little picture here so you understand whether or not this is you. So let's say that you're somebody who's already been dieting for a little while. Maybe it's been three, six, nine, 12 months. Maybe you are already getting in the amount of exercise that you need. You're getting you know, three to four or five, possibly six days a week of exercise. You're mixing it up between low intensity, higher intensity weightlifting, you know, you're throwing, you know, resistance, resistance training in there and you're starting to notice that your weight is pretty much just plateauing, right? It's just kind of a straight line across. It goes up a little bit, it goes down a little bit, but there's really no downward trend like I've talked about in some of my other videos. And this has been a very consistent pattern. Maybe it's been three weeks, four weeks, you know, maybe it's been a month, two months, and you're getting frustrated because you're putting in the work, but you're not seeing the weight loss results. Let's talk about this. So there's one of two things that are happening, okay? The first thing is your weight could be staying stable, but your body could be recompositioning. Okay, what does that mean? It means that your fat mass and muscle mass is changing at a rate that's equal so that your weight really doesn't change at all on the scale. But what you're doing is you're building muscle and you're burning body fat. And what's happening is as you lose fat and as you build muscle, right, you're building muscle here, you're losing fat here, that levels out the scale so that there's really not a lot of change on the scale. Now, one of the ways you can tell if this is happening is if your pant sizes are fitting better. Like if the inches around your body are starting to improve, right? You start to feel leaner. Maybe your weight's not going down, but your pant size is going down. Like maybe you went, you know, from a, a large pant size to more like a medium pant size or like the old pa pair of pants that you wear, wear every day to work or you wear very often is starting to be more loose. Like maybe you have to wear a belt just to keep them up, right? A lot of times it can be frustrating because we count on the scale to tell us when we're losing weight without realizing that we're losing weight and potentially gaining muscle weight at the same time. Now, this is a very positive thing. I don't want you to think this is a bad thing. This is a very, very good thing. The more you can recomposition your body to have lean toned muscle and lose body fat, the easier it's going to be to not only maintain your weight once you lose it, but also be able to keep lean when you decide you don't want to diet anymore. Okay. So it's, again, it's a very positive thing. And I don't think this gets talked about enough which is why I'm bringing it up. The second possibility is you, that you are truly at your composition sort of uh, stagnant point, right? Your body's already mostly recompositioned. You already have a decent amount of muscle mass. You're trying to lose sort of that last bit of body fat and nothing's happening. Let's say that for the sake of example, you're at about 1200 calories, right? This is where I see a lot of women get stuck. And, and for guys, it's usually like in the low, I would say maybe like the mid thousand. So like, you know, 1500, 1600, 1700 for a lot of guys. But for women, it's usually like 1200, 1400, somewhere in that range. And again, they're not seeing any weight loss. Their, their weight is pretty much staying stagnant the entire time what are you supposed to do all right so I'm gonna create a video that's more in depth about reverse dieting but I wanted to introduce the topic here so reverse dieting is essentially dieting in reverse right you're adding calories slowly to your diet you're keeping your activity relatively the same maybe taking down some of the high intensity stuff if you did a lot of high intensity stuff and focusing mostly on lower intensity exercise and weight training so how does this picture paint out. The very first thing I want you to know is that if you've done an online calculator to figure out your maintenance and you're eating 1200 calories, and let's say your maintenance is 1700 calories, right? The first you know thought you might have is, oh, I'm just going to start eating 1700 calories. Wrong, 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 wrong. Okay. Here's why that doesn't work. If your weight has been staying stagnant for a long period of time, your maintenance, your true maintenance is actually the amount of calories you're currently consuming, which in this case is 1200 calories. So if you were to go from 1200 calories all the way up to 1700 calories in a day, very quickly, you are going to put on body fat. All right, it's not gonna be just muscle. You are going to put on body fat because you're eating far above your actual true maintenance. Anytime your weight has stayed stagnant for a long period of time, and I would consider a long period of time at least two months, maybe three months, two and a half months, something in that, in that neighborhood, that is essentially telling you your, your body's out of maintenance now. The amount of calories you are consuming relative to the amount of calories you are burning is your calorie maintenance, right? Your body has adapted. And, and something that I think is also not well understood is that your calories and your exercise can adapt, right? 
If you consistently eat a certain amount of calories, you will eventually adapt to that amount of calories and that amount of calories that you're burning also through exercise, okay? So that's a very important thing to understand. So getting back to the 1200 calories, what you wanna do is you wanna keep your weight training the same. You want to, if you're doing a lot of high intensity cardio, you wanna dial that back and do some lower intensity cardio. Focus on things like your step count. So get, you know, an activity tracker if you don't already have one have a, a, a step count goal. You do that through walks, some low intensity exercise, things that won't you know, overstress your body but still get you active. And then you wanna add a small amount of calories each week and see what your weight does and just be mindful of you know, how quickly or, or how steep the sort of increase on a weekly basis your weight is. Now you might be wondering, well, how many calories am I supposed to increase per week? Very good question. So it is recommended, and this is what I've done with my clients, is it's recommended that you can increase whatever you're currently eating in terms of calories by 50 to possibly 100 calories, somewhere in that range, okay? Now, this is a small amount of calories that by the end of the week, your weight really shouldn't change that much, right? You're really not gonna be able to tell until week two, week three, week four, and if you're gaining like, you know, half a pound to a pound a week, just like if you were losing half a pound to a pound a week, that's a steady increase. The slower the increase, the less of that increase is going to be pure body fat. So just like we want to decrease calories slowly over time, right? We start with an initial deficit and then we slowly you know, create more of a deficit, just like we do it when we're trying to lose body fat. When we're trying to do recomposition or we're trying to work back up to our maintenance, maintenance we have to go slow so that we're not putting a ton of extra body fat on and then having to lose that body fat later. And I know that can be scary, right? It can be scary to be someone who has been dieting for a really long time and then suddenly increase calories. But I promise you that this approach, this strategy, very well done. If you do it the right way and you don't just go, I'm gonna eat whatever I want now because I'm in maintenance mode, then you're gonna be fine, I promise you. If you slow increases. Now it can be challenging to know just how to read some of this data. So just like it's important to get a coach to help you through this, I would recommend you get a coach and I will coach you on this if this is something you are interested in. If you want to do it on your own, I already gave you some of the most basic tips. The very first thing is understand you're currently at a maintenance, right? Whatever maintenance the calculator gave you online doesn't know your true maintenance at this moment. So whatever calories you're eating that's kept your weight the same, that is your calorie maintenance. You want to slowly increase the amount of calories you consume per week, all right? So for week one, you increase your total calories by 50. All right, then week two, you add another 50, all right? And you slowly add calories. And what you're doing is you're adding calories at a rate that keeps your weight slowly increasing, right? We're not trying to you know, increase our weight super steep because the chances of that being excess body fat is a lot greater. So small increases should keep our weight very steady. And there might be a slight incline or a slight you know, upward trend, but the the, the shorter or so the less steep the grade is, the better, all right? And this is how you build up to a higher calorie maintenance. Now you are going to put on some weight, all right? But what you have to understand is that if you're strength training, if you're still staying active, if you're doing these things on the exercise end, there's a good chance you're gonna be putting on some muscle and you wanna go slow, right? Don't try to rush into this. Don't start eating 500 calories more than you were because that will become body fat a lot easier, right? So slow and steady, as you increase to a higher calorie number. Now, when you get to a number that sort of keeps your weight the same, then you want to you know, increase like I talked about earlier, you know, another 50, maybe 100 calories, depending on how active you are and you know, how much you're putting into the exercise side of things. So I wanted to really touch on that really quickly. If you have more questions, please feel free to put them in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget, it to, don't forget to give it a thumbs up before you leave. And then if you want to share this video, maybe you've got a friend Maybe you've got somebody in your life who knows uh, that they need to sort of recomposition their body, they're eating too few calories, share this video with them. And then as always, if you don't mind, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you enjoyed this video, I'm gonna put out more content just like this that can help you figure out your biggest weight loss problems. Thanks a ton for watching this video today and I will see you in a future video. Y'all impatiently waiting, it's like an AIDS test. What's